you didn't know, we're based out of San Francisco, California here. And I'm out here and I'm gonna find me some fish, grab me some of these mussels somewhere because they're so abundant and then go home and make some fish and mussel stew. That's the plan. I know I haven't made content in a while, guys. I'm sorry. I've gotten some people asking me. I just graduated with my PhD. And, uh, and at the same time, my car got totaled. So I'm gonna make a video about that probably in the next, in the next video or so. But my car got totaled and the only reason why I'm out here today is I rode with Matt. Matt gave me a ride, Fisherman's Life. Gave me a ride, hit me up. These fishing trips are always so last minute. Hit me up yes, literally yesterday. And then, there you go, fish on. Hit me up, oh no, came off. There it is, back though. Fish on. Small one? Is there, I got one. Fish on. Uh, but he hit me up yesterday, decided last minute that it's a black, it's a nice black. Nice black. Cool, cool, cool. Look at this. Nice black rockfish. It's gonna be my bring this home for some fish stew. Awesome, man. That was one of my first casts. Probably like my second cast. That's the plan. I got a ride from Matt's. That's the only reason why I'm out here. I'm kind of carless right now. Solid black rockfish right here. Throw them in the live well. I know just stay in there for a bit. Swim around, stay alive at least, keep it as fresh as I can. It's already starting to look like a decent day. You know, start super, there's a bite. Oh, I missed it. It's already starting to look like a decent day, wow. So Matt's just caught an eight pound link cod. He's over here now, but he was on the other side of this rock earlier. I feel like I'm rubbing on some muscles or something. I don't like this. Can you see? Yep. Ah. Ugh. Caught a fish though. Weird. It's that cabazon. Went for it. First cast. First cast, first cast. Cabby, I don't think it's, I think it's short, but it's beautiful. Yeah, this one's close, but I don't think it's a keeper, so I'm gonna toss it into the water. Let's put him in that tide pool, get swept out. If you guys have never jigged for rockfish from shore with one of these jigs, I got this from Pitbull Tackles, their dead eye jig, send a two ounce right here. I wish it was slightly smaller, but two ounces will do. I think I'll be able to cast this pretty far out. With these jigs, you just have to be way more active and make sure it doesn't get on the bottom so you don't snag up. You can't really work the bottom as, as well as you'd like. Oh. That felt like a, like a hit. But it's fun when you get hooked up because it's so active and you're constantly just jigging like this. I'm only letting it sink just slightly. Just after it, it touches the water, it's gonna fall down quick because it's a two ounce. You don't wanna let it graze the bottom before you get snagged up. I thought, oh, that felt like a fish. That felt like a fish. So the last time I was out fishing, I was also with Matt's and uh, caught a couple cabs on from shore with some swim baits. Oh, fish. It's a decent one though. Let's, let's try to get it up. Matt's will try to land it for me. It's a cab? I think so. Red cab eating this red bait. Beautiful fish though. Had a keeper, but decided to let it go. It was right at 15 inches. If it's right on the nose at 15, I don't, you know, just 
personal preference, I generally don't keep those. Mats is on. Got a little blue on. Looks like a blue. Oh yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice blue. That's a fat blue. You got a fat blue right there. You have a jig for me? Later, we could just harvest all this, some of these mussels around here. Super easy to do. Throw them in that stew. Yep. What? Swim bait. Link cod. Spider. Right here. Oh, on the swim bait. Ah, oh, can't you be a little bigger? Right on the top. Throw them in the tide pool. The tide will come in, and then uh, and then sweep them out like that. So. Let them rest up for now. Really cool how they're so camouflaged. Move spots. Got a little love tap. Huh? A love tap, yep. <laughs> huh? I don't know, man. Gave my swim bait a kiss and just bounced. Oh, oh, it was a good one. Oh, it was a good one. It was a good one. I felt like a ling on the swim bait. Ah, that was my fish, dude. Probably barely got hooked or something. So I had tension on the whole time. Right here. Right here. Hold up, let me put, let me tip this guy with some squid. Make him commit. Man, I'm getting bites on this guy, but oh, I wonder if I should re-bend this hook back a little bit. Yeah, the hook's a little bent. See this, Matt? Ah. Very sharp either. I'm gonna rebend this guy real fast. You guys can't get him to commit. <laughs> Add a little strip of squid on here for that scent and that extra action. I bet you'd catch one. Dang, that felt like a ling at first because they're kind of heavy. They stay heavy. They like get on it and they don't shake right away. Yeah, exactly. And then you just gotta reel down to them and then set that hook. Got one. Got one. Got one. Oh, another small ling. Oh, another small one. Ah. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> oh, how many lings today? 
Yeah, it's a nice, nice blue looking one. Choked the swim bait. Uh, other one felt better. All right, last cast right here and then we'll get the muscles. <laughs> All right, baby, last cast. All right, baby, last cast. Let's work this jig. Try to entice some fish right here. Oh, there's one. Last cast, baby. Last cast. Last cast. Might be a ling. Last cast. Come on, don't come off. No, it's not, not that big. I mean, it's decent, but it's kind of staying down there though. Oh. A little on the jig. <laughs> I said a decent one. Probably like a 12 inch rockfish. All right, nice little black and yellow right here. Caught it on this, this jig here. Decent little fish, got some nice weight. Definitely a lot of patterns are amazing. Love these, love how rockfish have all kinds of different patterns. All right, well, we can harvest some of these mussels down here. Like this one looks fine. This one looks like a decent size. Actually, maybe this one. But they're so plentiful that you don't have to worry about. I mean, this is definitely sustainable. And let's grab like 15 of these. All right, we're back home. And so we got two rockfish, one black rockfish, one black and yellow rockfish. And then we have a bunch of mussels, about a pound or so. And so now, we're gonna go ahead and make our stew. And you might notice that I'm wearing this shirt. This is actually gonna be merchandise that I'll be selling. I just got some shirts in. Rocks, some waves, and the sunset. So earth, water, and fire. I'm gonna get some hats in, and I'm just waiting on the hats. And once those come in, I'm gonna start up a little website, and you know, whoever wants these shirts can definitely go and check them out. Let's make some food. We got a couple of nice, fresh, rockfish right here. Here's a black rockfish and then a black and yellow right there. And we're gonna just fillet the meat, cut them into one inch chunks, and then marinate that in some lemon juice for an hour in the fridge. But look at this. You guys gotta be super careful when you deal with rockfish. These rockfish are venomous. And so they have spines all over most of their body. So just be careful. And then I'm just gonna chunk up my fish. And then I'm just gonna make sure that all of them get some sort of juice, get all juiced up. All right, now they're gonna go in the fridge for about an hour. Got an onion that we're just gonna cut into quarters. So we have one serrano pepper here that we've, we're mincing and it's seeded. And depending on how much spice you like in your life, you know, you can use however many peppers you want. I'm just using one. So I kept my mussels cold in the fridge and I had them covered with 
um, a towel, a wet towel, and make sure that the muscles are, are loose and they're not sitting in their own juices. And so that'll help keep them alive for a few days if you needed to keep them alive. But now I scrub them a little bit and I'm gonna de-beard all of them. This is what they call their beard. This is what they use to attach themselves onto the rocks. You could just grab them and then kind of wiggle back and forth. Oops, and then that should take that beard out. That's one clean muscle. Bought some shrimp from the market. Unfortunately, we can't catch our own, but bought some shrimp at the market because I thought it'd be a good addition to this stew. And what I'm gonna do now is just literally just cut off the tip of the head just so the pointy part's gone and all the whiskers are gone. And then I'm gonna devein it. And so if you have a toothpick, it's pretty easy. There's a part right here that's right in the middle of the shell. Uh, it's easier with the toothpick, but you could use a fork and it's supposed to come out. There it is. Again, it's easier with the toothpick, but deveining all these shrimp and leaving the shell on. And after you take the fish out from the fridge, you're gonna drain the lemon juice and pat these fish dry. And it already looks like it's semi-cooked because of all the acid. So that's how it's gonna look. Got some butter in here and we're just gonna add these fish in. Single layer. I wanna brown one side. about a minute and a half. So it's been about a minute and a half and we're only browning one side on about medium high heat. Here's our cilantro, garlic, onions, and peppers. They're all going in. About a minute before these onions are gonna be translucent. And it's now at a boil and we're simmering for about four minutes. Got some coconut milk right here. We're gonna pour in about a cup and we're gonna mix that in and then simmer for about three minutes until it gets a little thick. Yeah, that looks good. It just smells so good. It's been simmering for a bit. Now we're adding our shrimp in. This is a little less than a pound of shrimp right here. And then now we're adding our fish back in. About another two minutes before we add in our mussels. So those go in for about another two minutes while well, you're just cooking them until they open up. So it'll be about two minutes or so, but just wait till they all open up. Oh yeah, look at that. There we go, some of the mussels opened and it looks about ready. And now all we have to do is add in two tablespoons of cashew butter that's whisked with two tablespoons of hot water to help it dissolve. And you're just gonna mix that well and add in some salt to your taste and you're good to go. And we're gonna try this, try this out. Doesn't that look amazing? Squeezing in a little bit of lemon juice to finalize, to finalize everything. Oh yeah. That's it right there, baby. Woo. Ah. Man, this was a relatively easy way to cook this, this meal. And I'm super excited to try it. I'm gonna take my first bite. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a kayak right now. And this is actually the Old Town Autopilot 136 that I'm gonna make some videos with in the future. There's one. There's one. This has an electric motor. It's gonna be a Minn Kota motor that's gonna be powered by a 12 volt, 100 amp uh, battery. Anyway, I'm gonna be making videos with this in the future. Um, but as of right now, I'm really ready to try some of this, some of this stew.
Taking his first bite, got some fish in the stew. Mmm. Wow. That's so good. Oh. It's very curry-like, but man, this is so good. This is so good on like a cold day, just like today, how it was super foggy. Mm. The onions are cooked down. I just can't get over how good this broth is. It has a very seafood flavor to it, but also a very you know, slight hint of curry because probably because that coconut, that coconut milk. That's legit. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out guys. Mm-hmm.